I would be so confident that we had great sound and then start realizing when I start asking people, they're like, well, you said you have really good sound, but what I, there's several times in your episodes where it gets really bad. I was like, really? During my recording, I would check all my sound stuff. I would be checking to make sure that my microphone was connected, that the light was on, that it was powered. I would check my settings and it would always say the microphone was connected. And I got to where I'd even check it like on every break just to make sure but what had turned out to happen was a couple things. Welcome to Launch It, the podcast maestro, your gateway to becoming a thought leader in your field. Dive into the world of elite podcasting and master the art of influence and inspiration. And now, podcast personality, award-winning author and actress, Anne Scotland. Hi, and welcome, welcome back to Launch It, the podcast maestro. I'm Anne Scotland and I'm mixing it up today. We're gonna do something totally different and fun today. So stay tuned, I'll let you know what we're gonna do. And as always, please do me a favor, like and subscribe. So today, how would you like to learn some lessons about podcasting or whatever you wanna call them? Examples, excellent points about podcasting in a fun and creative way. I'm always talking to you guys about how can you make your podcast more interesting? How can you use your story? So today I decided I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to give you some podcasting parables, lessons from the land of audio. So if you want to pop on your imagination hat with me, if you're one of those creative people, which you very likely are, if you are a podcaster or interested in having a podcast, then join me for going this little fantasy expedition to podcast land. We're going to really have a lot of fun. But also please comment as we go. Send me any of your questions and also send any of your suggestions in for the show. So let's just jump straight in today. Why not? Right? Okay. I wasn't kidding. We're actually going to do fables, podcasting fables. Maybe I should say no parables is better because, but I'm going to put in fables too, because just in case, because these are truisms as opposed to falsisms, which fables are usually assumed to be false. So <laughs> number one, okay, this one's fun. This is about consistency over speed with your podcasting production. So what does that mean exactly? Just what it sounds like. Being consistent is more important than churning out mass produced episodes. Some people will beg to differ with me. I know someone who often does 10 in a day, back to back to back to back to back. I don't know how you can keep up that much energy for that long time but and have the same quality, but maybe it works for some people in that sense, but churning out content doesn't necessarily mean it's great. So today, parable one, the tortoise and the mic. Yes, as you can imagine, once upon the time in the bustling podcast jungle, there was a tortoise who dreamed of starting his own show, right? So every day he'd record a new episode slowly but steadily, just kind of keeps honing his content. He improves his sound quality. He keeps to his release schedule. So his listeners and viewers know when to expect him. Meanwhile, the hare, his speedy neighbor, right, <laughs> decides to just jump into podcasting as well. And what? Of course, the hare quickly produces a flurry of episodes. Just tape, 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 put them out, put them out, flashy, full of hype. But the hare soon grows tired of this and he starts taking long breaks between releases. Sound familiar, anybody? <laughs> Has that ever happened to you? Uh, as the weeks pass, though... The tortoise keeps moving forward one episode at a time. The hare's audience gets frustrated because his schedule is so inconsistent. So if you've ever found a podcast that you loved, but then realized it only came on once in a blue moon and you never actually could count on when they were going to be live streaming, that can be very frustrating. You're like, ugh, whatever. If I find it, I find it, but I'm not going to make a big point anymore of finding it when it airs live. Well, in the end, of course, it was the tortoise who built a loyal following who knew who always knew when he was going to be on or her tortoise and proving that in podcasting, the slow but steady truly wins the race. In general, that is a real truism, a principle. Consistency is absolutely key. Regular, reliable content really builds that trust and loyalty with your audience. So as 
always just remember consistency over speed. And I think that's really important when you first decide to launch your podcast, whether you are doing it on your own or you're working with someone like me, having that consistency always streaming, always being released at the same time. Also consistency and quality. Sometimes you see people produce video podcasts, but they're not really trying to do a location podcast, but they're just in some like random motel somewhere. The light is terrible. I guess it depends on the person and the content. But as you know, here at the Podcast Maestro, we like to do world-class productions. And with that in mind, we want to maintain our quality and make sure that everyone, including the guests, whenever possible, has the best possible presentation, equipment, lighting, all those very many things. All right. Well, are you dressed this morning? Did you get up? Did you put any clothes on? My hope is yes, unless you're extraordinarily comfortable right now at home. <laughs> because parable number two in these uh, podcast fables, <laughs> lessons from the land of audio, parable number two is the emperor's new, no, not clothes, the emperor's new podcast. So what avoiding vanity metrics is really what we're going to talk about. So here we go. You ready? You're going to go on this ride with me? Okay. In the city of Podville, there was an emperor who wanted to have the most successful podcast in the land. And he spent a fortune on gaudy artwork. He hired only the most exclusive guests, noticed hired <laughs> the old most exclusive guests and focused on one thing above all else, his download numbers. Sound familiar, anyone? Or do you know anyone like that? The emperor loved to boast about his thousands and thousands of downloads, even though most of his episodes had a really high dropout rate and very little listener engagement. And we've talked about that on previous shows, dropout rates and listener engagement. How engaged do they say? How many comments are they leaving you? How consistently do you hear from the same listeners and viewers? Well, back to the emperor here. So one day after he's doing all these gaudy podcasts, very snazzy, pays for everything, money's no object, a little child from a small village listens to the emperor's podcast. And he says, why does no one ever talk about what you say? I guess he says this to the emperor. Yes, he says to the emperor when the emperor visits his village, how come nobody ever talks about what you say? And the emperor says, oh, well, I guess his numbers looked impressive, but he wasn't really truly connecting with his audience or providing valuable content. In other words, do you have any street cred? Do people know the name of your show? Are you recognizable? How is your branding consistent with your other branding in your business or company? How do people talk about you? Do they refer it? Do they tell other people to watch and listen? Because that is the key. The emperor's listeners were tuning out before the end. And then all those downloads were just sort of a hollow illusion or vanity metrics created in a number of ways, right? So Vanity metrics like download numbers do not tell the whole story. What you really want to do is focus on creating content that engages and resonates with your audience. I say this almost every episode. Who cares if you have a million followers if you that never engage with you when you have 10,000 followers who constantly engage with you, send you messages, respond, send you suggestions, pass you on, repost you. That is what you're looking for. It's vanity metrics is not the answer and you can go a long way. I'll give you some examples of other shows in the future of that, even though they had low numbers in the greater scheme of things became very famous shows and very influential because they had real audience interaction. They were really resonating with the people who were listening and watching. Are you having fun yet? I am. I love stories. I always do. So I've got a few more for you, but first we're going to take a really quick break. While we're on break, please like, subscribe, shoot me a message. You can shoot me via the website and scotland.com, or you can comment here and we'll be right back. Picture this. You have worked your whole life to become an expert, a leader, a change maker, but you're so busy. Most people will never discover you to recognize your work. Anne Scotland, founder of Podcast Maestro, understands this challenge. With a decade of Hollywood experience and a proven track record as a business coach, Anne turns seasoned professionals into thought leaders through the art of podcasting. 
Podcast Maestro offers plug and play services, handling everything from pre-production to distribution, so you can focus on your message while Anne and her team manage the rest. Leverage Anne's Hollywood production knowledge, strategic business insight, and social media expertise to amplify your reach and impact. If you're ready to elevate your voice, connect with Anne Scotland at Podcast Maestro and begin your podcast journey today. All right, welcome back to the Podcast Maestro, where we are having fun today with podcasting parables or fables, whatever you prefer, lessons from the land of audio. We've talked about the tortoise and the mic. We've talked about the emperor's new podcast. They're going with the theme here. And now we're moving on to other true facts and examples from podcasting using fables and stories. This one, can you think of some we haven't done yet? The podcaster and the golden goose. <laughs> so what is that about the podcaster? Well, once upon a time, I have to say it, a podcaster found this magical golden goose, of course, that laid eggs of pure profit. Yes, please. And each time he released an episode, the golden goose would provide him with sponsorship deals, affiliate income, ad revenue, whatever, right? So overjoyed with his newfound wealth, the podcaster, he begins to produce more and more episodes and he's focusing on maximizing his income. Focus, 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 money, money, money. And he's like, I have found the golden goose. Of course, the podcaster becomes obsessed with monetization, which a lot of people do, which is a lot of the reason why you don't know their shows anymore. Whoops, did I jump the gun there? He becomes obsessed. She becomes obsessed with monetization and the quality of her content begins to decline. And so listeners really get tired of endless ads and low value episodes with more and more commercials and one day, the golden goose laid its last egg and the podcaster's audience vanished and his once thriving show faded into obscurity and all his sponsors went away because his interaction numbers, his listener numbers had fallen so much because the quality had dropped. He was no longer viable to be invested in. So moral of the story, yes. Monetization is important, but never at the expense of quality, right? Keep your focus on providing value to your listeners. Balance your desire for motivation with quality content. If you're a numbers person, if you like graphs, if you like tables, put it together in a way that you can see it, recognize it, balance your monetization, but always be also watching your engagement rates, right? So doing that is always fun. All right. You ready for another one? <laughs> We're going to keep it short and sweet today. All right. Number four of our podcast parables or fables, the frog who wouldn't croak. Do you know this one? Does that re resonate? Do you remember? Okay. How do you find your unique voice? <laughs> is what we're gonna, I'm going to talk to you about, right? So here we go. In the vast marshlands of the podcasting pond, there was a little frog who wanted to start a podcast every time he tried to speak, he imitated, yeah, the other animals in the pond, the bear, the high-pitched squirrel, or the melodic tune of the birds, the nightingale. And no one wanted to listen to the frog because they're like, we already have a bear and a squirrel and a bird. And like, you're not being yourself. Why are you interesting? Well, one day, Yes, of course, the wise old owl sits down with the frog and he says, so why do you try to be like everyone else? Your voice is so unique and it's really what makes you special. And the frog took the owl's advice and he started croaking on his own and sharing his thoughts. I'm sorry, but it's just too funny. He's in his stories and in his insights and in his own vibe and his own, in his own tastes and preferences in his just the environment that he lives in a comfortable emotional space where he's not trying to fake it till he makes it like that ever works. Anyway, to his surprise, the frog finds that big shock. All the other animals begin to listen because they hadn't heard a frog before and they were drawn to his authenticity, drawn to the honesty in his voice. So would you like to share the moral of the story? I wish we were live and you could, and that'd be fun. So embrace your unique voice and perspective. It really is your authenticity that is what truly resonates with your audience. Your sincerity, 
your vulnerability even, which some people are like, ah, but being real with your audience, admitting that you're not perfect and you don't have all the answers, but also having really high quality content that is useful immediately. That is the reason. So find your unique voice. Don't try to just mimic someone else's show. There's a lot of other podcasting shows out there, but I'm not trying to copy them because I'm me. I have my own brand, my own business. I have my own vibe. I don't have a male radio voice. Oh, well, that's who I am. Love me or leave me. <laughs> okay. So, all right. Parable number five. Are you ready? Or fable number five here in the land of podcasting, fables and parables. Ah, uh, the curious microphone. Hmm. Well, what, you know what the story would that be from? Well, we're going to jump straight in. So the curious microphone. How cute is that, right? Look, how cute is my curious microphone? Okay. In the land of Audio Heights, there was a curious microphone who wanted to capture the best sounds in the world. The microphone, he would travel from town to town. He'd record speeches and music and conversations. But no matter where it went, the recordings always sounded a bit off. Like sometimes they were too loud. Sometimes they were too quiet. Sometimes they were full of echoes. Sound familiar? Ever run into that when you're listening to podcasts? Well, one day the microphone met a wise old sound engineer who said, have you ever asked your listeners how it sounds to them. And the microphone realized that he'd never really thought to ask for feedback. There's a moral in this story and a lesson in real life that I'm going to tell you about. <laughs> so he's like, I'd never asked for feedback. So when it when he started asking for feedback, well, how's the sound quality? He couldn't believe what other people said they heard, that they heard all these echoes, these odd sounds, that it was too noisy. And once he got that feedback, he could start making the necessary adjustments. And soon the microphone was creating recordings that everybody loved. <laughs> so listeners feedback is crucial for improving your podcast and always be open, always be open to hearing what your audience has to say. Regularly ask for listener feedback, ask for it right in your social media, in your feeds. When you're talking to listeners, just ask because not only is it great to ask and get that feedback so you can make minor corrections to make your show even better, but they may also give you some other suggestions that they just never really would have been motivated to say, like, you know, that one time, like sometimes your light blinks a little bit, or, you know, sometimes I just get really bored. I love your show, but you get into these like long things sometimes, and I just kind of space out. You might get really useful feedback, right? Uh, or it could make your show shorter or make your show longer right? Well, for the microphone, this is actually somewhat based on a true story of my own, which is the curious microphone, because I had a microphone for a while that was cheating on me <laughs> because the port of, from the cord into the mic had a faulty, there was a faulty port. So during my recording, I would check all my sound stuff. I would be checking to make sure that my microphone was connected, that the light was on, that it was powered. I would check my settings and it would always say the microphone was connected. And I got to where I'd even check it like on every break just to make sure. But what had turned out to happen was a couple things. One, I was wearing a faulty earpiece sometimes that would go in and out and make the microphone default to the earpiece, even though I had manually set it to be my quality microphone. And the other thing that was happening was the port on the microphone itself where the cord went in was faulty. It was loose. So I would put pop the cord in and during actual streaming, it would loosen up and it would default to my low quality sound recording. And I would be so confident that we had great sound and then start realizing when I start asking people, they're like, well, you said you have really good sound, but what I, there's several times in your episodes where it gets really bad. I was like, really? So in the past, that was an issue, which I have since fixed. So one, always listen to your own work. Number one, and two, ask what people's suggestions are and ask them about the sound quality, ask them about and content in general. Is there anything you would change? You can even ask them a general question like that. And you might be surprised what kind of answers you get because listener feedback is always crucial for really improving your podcast. 
Uh, so in this episode of Launch It, the Podcast Maestro, we've wandered through this magical land of podcasting and, and each of these tales, I hope, has brought you um, something valuable wrapped in fun and creative packaging. <laughs> because for me, stories, even these parables or fables, they remind me that while podcasts are a serious business, there's already always a little room for whimsy, for silliness, and a lot of heart. So also a lesson you can apply to your own podcast to keep it, keep it different, keep it varied, keep your listeners and viewers interest. So question for you, what is your favorite podcast parable from today? You can share it with me on social media or on email. You can go straight to my website and scotland.com. My email is there. If you want to recap the stories were the tortoise and the mic the emperor's new podcast the podcaster and the golden goose the frog who wouldn't croak and last but not least the curious microphone with a real life uh, comparison there from <laughs> my own experience so yeah share with me what your favorite one might be and don't forget to tune in next week for another exciting episode of launch of the podcast maestro getting ready to bring in some new guests which i think is going to also keep it fun and always streaming each week on Wednesdays. That's at 12 p.m. EST, 9 a.m. PST, and 4 p.m. GMT for our friends across the frog pond. That didn't work at all. Across the pond. Yeah, just across the pond. Okay. And yes. And, and please share this, share the show, share this link with someone else who would love a fun and entertaining talk about podcasting today. And until then, until next week, keep creating, keep sharing, and remember every podcast has a story worth telling. I'm Ann Scotland. You've been listening to Launch It, the podcast maestro. Check me out on annscotland.com. See how I can help you launch your podcast or help mentor you in the podcast you already have. Cheers. See you next time.